have come to pay homage to the life and the legacy of a man whose life touched millions around the world. A man whose infectious smile and unwavering perseverance inspired those who knew him best. A man whose leadership on the football field took a team where it had never been before. A man whose career defied the skeptics, made opponents respect him, and made every naysayer take it back. We are remembering tonight a son, a husband, a brother, a father, a teammate, a friend. For me, Steve was not just a parishioner. He was a fraternity brother. He was a very dear friend. To his mother, if you're watching, we know our words are but futile in light of the enormous grief you are experiencing. However, I know that God will see you through this. We are thankful to God that he blessed you to give birth to such a man. Thank you for giving him to us. To Michelle, you are an amazing woman. You have inspired us all to endure hardness as a good soldier. We love you. And be well assured that Stephanie and I and your church family here in this community is standing with you and have every intention on covering you and the kids through, through this season. We wouldn't have it any other way. To the children, always remember this about your father. Tyler and Trent, you had a great father. He was a great man. Take a look around this sanctuary at all the lives your father touched. He was truly one of a kind. He was a humanitarian. He was a philanthropic. Philanthropist. He was a superior athlete, a motivator, an entrepreneur, a great father to you and to the rest of the family as brothers and to the extended family. You have our prayers in the days to come. After spending time with God, I came to this moment with one word, if. It is in moments like this that make those of us who love Steve reflect upon his life and ponder the ifs of life. As some who are wondering what if this had happened and not that. Some are wondering what if I had been there. Others are wondering, what if I had said this to him? What if God had intervened? Or what if the circumstances the other day were different? If creates within all of us a sense of seemingly unending anxiety that can haunt us for days and weeks and even years. Rudolph Kipling penned it in graphic form. If you can keep your head. When all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you and but make allowances for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired of waiting or being lied about, not dealing lies. Or being hated, don't give way to hating and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools or watch the things you gave your life to broken. And stoop and bill them up with worn out twos. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss. And lose and start again at the beginning and never breathe a word about your loss. You can force your heart and nerve and send you to serve your turn long after they are gone. And so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. 
You can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you but none too much, you can feel the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it and which is more. You'll be a man, my son. In John chapter 11, Jesus shows up late to a situation where Lazarus was dead. He had been summoned earlier, but Jesus took his time because Lazarus' death would be for the glory of God. And when Jesus shows up, his sisters are struggling with the if issue. If you had been here, this would not have happened. Our brother would not be dead. What happens after this statement speaks to us today because the if question can only be answered by God text says that when Jesus first received the news about Lazarus, the report was, listen, the one whom you love is sick. Uh, Let's take a moment and reflect upon this because Lazarus was sick, but his sickness did not disqualify him. 